In episode two, we examine the four barriers that hinder serious Bible study. These four barriers are also the same hurdles that archaeologists must overcome to conduct their research. Since archaeologists began the study of antiquity, the need to understand ancient points of reference has demanded the use of a wide variety of research tools. It is a known fact that over 80% of all archaeological work is conducted in the dusty halls of libraries, not with the pick and shovel on archaeological digs. No matter which ancient civilization is studied, the archaeologist must decipher the language, the culture, the geopolitical influences, and the history of his dust and stone remains. Consider this fact with me. We are scriptural archaeologists. When we approach our Bible studies, we must dig out the influences of the ancient civilizations that motivated the writing of the Bible. The dust and ashes of nations long since dead are filled with clues the diligent student of the Word will sift in order to understand the Bible writer's point of reference. In this episode, I will present a basic overview of several research books and the use of computers and the internet to conduct Bible research. Let me stress that the books and computer software presented are only a sampling of what is available on the research market. The first canyon we will build a bridge across is the linguistic barrier. I know it may come as a surprise, but the Bible was not written in the English language. The ancient forms of Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic are not common languages today. In order to sift through the subtle variations and nuances of the original languages, we must use lexicons and language concordances. The first linguistic aid we will examine is the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. The Strong's Exhaustive Concordance was first published in 1890, and it was constructed under the direction of Dr. James Strong, professor of theology at Drew Theological Seminary. Dr. Strong compiled his concordance with the contributing efforts of more than 100 of his colleagues. The concordance was first published as an exhaustive reference of every English word in the King James Version of the Bible cross-referenced back to its corresponding word in the original text. The copyright on the original publication of the concordance has elapsed. Therefore, we have several publishers who have created their own version of this great work. Initially, the concordance was coded to the King James Version of the Bible, but new publications have been released that are coded to the New International and the New American Standard versions of the Bible. The Strong's Exhaustive Concordance will become the cornerstone of your linguistic library because of its massive cross-reference capability and its unique number coding system. The Concordance has three different and unique applications. The Strong's can help you find a certain verse where you can only remember one or two words used in that verse. The concordance can help you determine the Hebrew or Greek word used by the translators. The Strong's also lists every occurrence in the King James Version of the Bible where an English word is used. The main concordance is the largest section, usually between 1200 and 1300 pages. It's assembled in traditional English dictionary format. This main concordance lists every occurrence in the King James Version of the Bible where an English word is used. And this massive cross-reference capability is the power of this concordance. Each scriptural entry has three segments. The first segment is a quote indicating the topic word used in context. The second segment is the scriptural reference. The third segment is Strong's unique numbering system 
designed to help the student locate the correct Hebrew or Greek word used in the original manuscripts. This coded numbering system, developed by James Strong, is the second great wonder of this concordance. Each word in the original language has been given an entry number that corresponds to its location in the original language dictionary located in the back of the concordance. Should the number be associated with an Old Testament verse or is listed in the normal type font, the corresponding word can be found in the Hebrew dictionary. Should the number be associated with a New Testament verse or is listed in the italicized font, the corresponding word can be found in the Greek dictionary. In order to understand the various abbreviations and signs employed in the Greek and Hebrew language dictionaries, please refer to the abbreviations and signs employed section prior to each dictionary. Each language entry has the appropriate Hebrew or Greek word in its original format and an English transliteration that is the equivalent to the original lettering. Each entry also has a phonetic transcription to aid the student in the pronunciation of the word. Before you learn how to interpret the definitions presented for each original word, you must understand a basic definition of etymology. According to the Webster's Dictionary, etymology is the history of a word as shown by breaking it down into its basic elements or by tracing it back to the earliest known form and indicating its changes in form and meaning. For example, you might see this type of entry. These numbers are the source and history of your study word. The numbers correspond to their equivalent in the appropriate dictionaries. Or you might see this type of entry. This statement indicates that your study word is the primary source of other words and is not extracted from other words. These type of statements indicate the etymology of your study word and are not necessarily part of the definition. The definition section of your study word can be difficult to understand should you fail to consult the abbreviations and signs employed section. In the definition, there are several italicized words. These words indicate explanations and variations from the original form in the King James Version of the Bible. The format of James Strong was to present the literal translation of the word, but often he would include the implied application of the word. At times, also Strong would include the figurative application of the word. Should these variations be used, you will note their abbreviations in the definition. I must draw your attention to the colon and dash symbol because it indicates the end of the definition and the beginning of the various ways your study word is translated in the King James Version of the Bible. Each word appearing after the colon and dash are the different English words used by the translators to communicate the various applications of the host Hebrew or Greek word. With these various translations, you could look up in the main concordance each English word and record each place where your entry number is used and you would have a list of every place in the Bible where your study Hebrew or Greek word is used. For several decades, only the most skilled Bible scholars could study the Bible in the original languages. Hebrew and Greek lexicons could only be read by those skilled in these languages. In the early 1970s, Christian publishers realized that their linguistic publications were limited to only advanced Bible scholars. How could they present their books to the wider market of the average Bible student? The answer discovered by these publishers 
was both simple and inspired. They discovered the Strong's numbering system to help the Bible student to use their linguistic tool. By inserting the Strong's numbering system into their Hebrew and Greek dictionaries, lexicons, and concordances, they created a wider market for their products. It's important to remember this point. You should always purchase linguistic aids coded to the Strong's exhaustive concordance. In the Greek linguistic world, one of the best lexicons on the market was compiled by Joseph Henry Thayer in the late 19th century. For many years, Thayer's Greek-English lexicon could be used only by those advanced students of the Bible who could recognize the Greek alphabet. But now, this work can be purchased coded to the Strong's exhaustive concordance. Should you use this book, take the time to review the list of ancient authors and the list of books and the explanations and abbreviations section. Even though the Thayer's Greek-English lexicon is one of the best linguistic aids on the market today, a word of caution is necessary. Joseph Thayer was a marginal Unitarian and the heresies of this sect occasionally come through in the explanatory notes. In the Hebrew linguistic world, the Jacenna's Hebrew lexicon is one of the best Hebrew lexicons the Bible student can own, but you should purchase one coded to the Strong's exhaustive concordance. In order to understand the abbreviations used in this book, familiarize yourself with the publisher's introduction, the preface, and the to the student sections. When we discussed the usage of the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, we recognized that this book could be used to identify every occurrence in the English Bible where a certain Hebrew or Greek word is used. I drew your attention to the colon and dash symbol and shared the fact that each word appearing after this symbol are the various ways your study word is translated in the King James Version of the Bible. You could look up in the main concordance each English word appearing after this symbol and record each place where your number entry is used. With this tedious project completed, you would have a list of every place in the Bible where your study Hebrew or Greek word is used. This is a long and wearisome task. There must be a better way. That better way is the Englishman's Greek or Hebrew concordances compiled by George Wigram. In the same way, that the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance identifies every occurrence of an English word in the Bible. The Englishman's Concordance identifies every occurrence of the original Hebrew or Greek word. To make this linguistic tool truly useful, you must purchase one coded to the Strong's Concordance. The Expository Dictionary of New Testament Words written by W.E. Vines, is probably the best linguistic aid on the market today. This book is very useful since it is arranged according to an English dictionary format. Simply look up your English word as it appears in the King James Bible and read Vines' expository comments. The Old Testament Word Studies by William Wilson is another fine study tool. This book is also assembled according to an English dictionary format. One drawback to this book is its limited word selection. On occasion, I have referenced this book and could not find my study word. Both books can be purchased coded to the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. The Hebrew and Greek languages are picturesque in nature with various shades of meaning. Many times, there is no perfect English equivalent. Therefore, I usually require two or three witnesses to confirm a definition. Remember this simple rule while you study in the Hebrew and Greek languages. The remaining books we will consider are designed to bridge the three remaining canyons that separate the student of the Bible 
from the perspective of the Bible author. These three canyons are the cultural, historical, and the geographical barriers. We will consider these research books together because the information presented by each book has a tendency to overlap between the three remaining barriers. Manners and Customs of the Bible, written by James Freeman, is an excellent tool to bridge the cultural and historical gaps of the Bible. At first, this book may seem difficult to use, but be patient. In time, you will find it easy to locate important information within the three indexes. With this book, one important point must be remembered. The number location identified by these indexes does not reference a page number, but a subject commentary location. The IVP Background Commentary New Testament edited by Craig Keener and the Old Testament edited by John Walton, Victor Matthews, and Mark Chevalis are excellent commentaries designed to put the student of the Bible into the historical and cultural arena of the Bible authors. The commentaries are arranged according to the book order of the Bible with brief commentary on most verses being considered. Each Bible research library should have a Bible Atlas. I currently use and recommend the Oxford Bible Atlas. The index at the back of the book provides page and column coordinates for each study topic. The italicized numbers indicate the page the study topic could be found, while the normal print letter and the number adjacent to the page number indicate its horizontal and vertical coordinates on the map. In order to bridge the historical barrier, I mainly use Unger's Bible Dictionary and the five-volume International Standard Bible Encyclopedia set. Unger's Bible Dictionary is my favorite historical research aid because of its short, concise articles. I prefer Unger's Bible Dictionary because of its excellent archaeological commentary. The author, Merrill F. Unger, was the foremost Bible archaeologist in the nation before his death. The topics presented by the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia are extensive and informative, and I enjoy cross-referencing the material between these two study tools. These study books have the ability to bridge the historical cultural and geographical gaps. The intention of this episode is not to try and sell you on any of these books, but I do recommend them because I use these research tools. When I teach this course outline, I'm usually asked which book should be purchased first. Therefore, I assembled a recommended purchase order. Please review the list. Your first two purchases should be the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance and a good Bible dictionary of your choice, but my personal preference is Unger's Bible Dictionary. Why do I recommend these purchases? These two books will allow you to bridge all four research gaps in a basic fashion. Remember to make all purchases coded to the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. In today's computerized world, Bible research has gone electronic. Nearly all the books presented so far can be found in most Bible study software. The sad truth is, most of my Bible research books are gathering dust in my library because my computer software 
have the same books in a searchable electronic format. In the computerized Bible research market, there are three leading software packages available. These packages are Logos Bible, QuickVerse, and PC Study Bible. Each of these packages has strong points and limitations, but my personal preference is PC Study Bible by BibleSoft. With this software package, you may simply read the Bible or display up to eight linkable windows of different versions of your study reference or eight different unlinked scriptural references. Most Bible study software include concordance search capability linked with the Strong's numbering system. They also include the Strong's exhaustive concordance Hebrew and Greek dictionaries plus Thayer's Greek definitions and Brown, Driver, and Briggs Hebrew definitions. The search capability of the computer will also perform the function of the Englishman's Greek or Hebrew concordances. The simple introductory package provided by BibleSoft includes four Bible dictionaries, the basic Hebrew and Greek search capabilities presented, and a basic Bible atlas. Just this package alone replaces seven of the ten recommended research books presented. Recently, the need to purchase such software has been challenged by the power of the Internet. There are several websites on the Internet that provide the same usefulness and functionality as the Bible software packages described. To see what is available on the Internet, go to google.com and conduct searches on such phrases as Bible study or Bible research or even Bible search. Please review some of the internet sites you can use for Bible research. The question I often hear is this. Why purchase expensive books or software packages when internet Bible study is free? This question can be difficult to answer, but for me, the best solution is to use all three options. I use computer software packages for speed of search and stability, while I use the internet to access a larger study environment. My current research book library provides material not available on the internet or computer software. The thought that Bible research on the internet is free is deceiving because internet access can be expensive also. Don't attempt to do Bible study on a slow, dial-up internet connection. You will only become frustrated. You should use at least a DSL internet connection for speed. At times, internet access can be fickle depending on your service provider and your equipment. It's not good to put all your eggs into an internet basket because websites come and they go. Should you decide to use the internet as your research tool, then I strongly recommend you slowly develop a backup plan should your connection fail or your favorite study website goes away. In the end, it's hard to replace the printed page.